Installing and setting up Metasploit Framework from GitHub on OSX, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. In this minute, we're going to be setting up the latest version of Metasploit Framework directly from GitHub repository on OSX. So this is a lot like we, what we did on, uh, for GitHub version with on, on Kali, except for there's a bunch of different little tweaks and things that we have to do on OSX to get it going right. So what we have right here, let me show you on the screen. What we have here is uh, a list of to-dos, and this came directly again from Carlos Perez's awesome tutorials on installing Metasploit. This one particularly is for Lion and Mountain Lion. There's a bunch of tweaks in here that we needed to do for Mountain Lion to get it working on our install. So I'm going to go through a bunch of the things, but we've already covered a lot. So I'll just go through some of the tweaks that I had to do during the installation. Now, you can use either brew install or um, Mac ports. And I find that brew is a lot better at getting the things that you need for Metasploit to work. Now there are, you know, this is the Vim Emacs fight all over again. Um, so let's use brew in this instance. So let's go over and talk through some of the changes. All right. First is the brew install. Ruby, this whole thing, and you can find all the, that whole thing at brew.sh. So once we have that going, um, that installs brew. It takes a few seconds. Um, then what you want to do is get these two things into your bash profile, and we're going to echo those in right now. So those two, and let me point out something in particular. Those two um, paths um, help us with getting Ruby and the gems particularly um, working and running from whatever directory we need to have them in. So in this particular directory, 193.193.448, that's the install of Ruby that I installed here on this OSX. It might be a little different from what you're going to install. So once we do that, we install the homebrew version of 193, and we're gonna just skip that because we already did that, as well as the Postgres install. So those should complete without fail from brew. And once you have those installed, you'll have Postgres and Ruby working. What you want to do just to make sure that everything's going all right is you want to do ruby-v. If ruby-v shows you 187, then you have not restarted your uh, terminal. Um, this echo into the path puts it in the bash profile folder or file. Uh, you might have to restart your terminal to get that to work correctly. And if that doesn't work, then you have something wrong with your install. After that, we make our directories for Postgres to automatically start. Now, you don't have to do this step. This particular step is only there if you want Postgres to start automatically. The next thing is to copy in, into that, in that plist, into that launch agents, which will start automatically whenever you log in. You start Postgres now manually because you're not have, without having to uh, log out and log back in. And you create your users, just like we did with the GitHub install. It's not much different. This is the bundle in, or the gem installs, just like we did on GitHub. The only difference here is we're installing bundler instead of bundle. Um, and we're installing PG and SQLite and, and some of the other packages that, are, well, that aren't there by default on OSX, where they are on Kali. And then we get clone, and we've already done this. I just cloned it into documents. Metasploit, we already have all of our the files and folders that we already know about in there. And we bundle install, just like we did before. Now, I've already done that to save some time, so that's already in there, and it's just as it's using it, it's ready to go. If we do MSF console now, what's gonna happen is we're, it's gonna start up Metasploit, but we haven't synced it up with our database. And let's see if you remember, where do we put that database file? That's right, in our home directory, cd.msf for, oops, home directory, .msf4. So that database file, exactly how we did it before. Now, we have gone over these installations for GitHub and for um, OSX installation, giving the password of MSF. While, you, while Postgres is only listening on 127001, 
Do you really want to make it that easy for anyone who pops your box to get into all of your uh, exploit uh, database? Probably not. So you definitely want to change that password and use something else. But in this demo, we're going to use MSF. So let's get back to our Metasploit directory, start up MSF console. And now, one thing I want to give as a tip, just as we're going through this, and we'll give more tips along the way, is almost everything inside of Metasploit has a dash H. If you don't know what this command does, use dash H. It'll help out. Uppercase L, I like to use. It's, it uses real read line, which is the system read line instead of Ruby's read line. It's just a lot better when you're trying to backspace and, and copy and, and a bunch of other things that make life a little hard if you're doing screen and stuff like that. So we start MSF console dash uppercase L. Just as an overview, we went through a bunch of steps um, ahead of time to make sure that this since we we're doing a lot of the same steps, we would be would be a lot faster. And look at that. We have our little bunny. All right. That's it. So tell me what you think. Hit me up at msf at hack5.org. Stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Until then, I'm Mubix, and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. I hit uh, Command Q to quit, oh, and then. Close out of your notepad with all your. So the, no, I was trying to close out of my notepad with all my stuff in it, and um, Command Q inside of VMware is quit VMware.